Hi friends, welcome to English Study Point. Today in this video lecture, I am going to cover biography of Margaret Fuller and also in this video lecture, I am going to discuss important works that she published during her lifetime. Margaret Fuller was an American writer, critic and women's rights advocate. She was born in the year 1810 in a place called Cambridgeport, which is situated in Massachusetts and died in the year 1850 in a shipwreck of the coast of Fire Island in New York. She was educated by her father and she read Ovid at the age of 8. From 1800 39 to 1844, she held a series of conventional classes at Elizabeth Peabody's home. That means that she in her home hold discussions with other transcendentalists. Here I am discussing Margaret Fuller's contribution in the field of literature. So she became an editor for a magazine titled as The Dial. The Dial was the main transcendentalist periodical which was started from the year span between 1840 to 1844. It was reviewed as a magazine of politics and literary criticism. It was very influential during the time of modernists. These are some important facts in regard to this ma uh, journal or magazine. So she wrote extensively on a wide range of topics such as social reform, politics and spirituality. Her journalistic work displayed her sharp intellect and deep knowledge. So she in this way played a crucial role in shaping the intellectual and cultural landscape of her time. Another work is titled as Summer on the Lakes which uh, in 1843 which was published in the year 1844. The essay begins with Margaret Fuller describing her journey to the Great Lakes region in the summer of 1843. So here she did not go as a tourist but as a lover of nature and a student of human nature. Fuller expresses her fascination with the landscapes of Great Lakes. Here she describes uh, these Great Lakes as a blend of beauty and wildness. She is very much impressed by the vastness and power of the lakes. That is why she compares Great Lakes to Mediterranean Sea. She reflects on the industrialization and rapid development of this region having immense potential for growth and prosperity. This sort of progress have negative impacts too, on the environment and the indigenous people who were displaced, forcibly displaced and mistreated. The essay highlights Fuller's interaction with the Native Americans she encounters during her journey. So she is moved by their deep connection to the land and their sense of spirituality. She criticizes the American government who always mistreats indigenous people rather she urges for justice and compassion on such kinds of people she talks about position of women in society particularly focusing on the limitations placed on them so she argues in a way she argues for women's education and empowerment stating that they should not be reduced to mere ornaments in the domestic sphere this society often suppresses true individuality in favor of conformity here she advocates for people to embrace their unique selves and not be dictated by societal expectations the essay concludes with Fuller reflecting on the importance of nature and spiritual lessons it can teach us. She is urging that to live in nature allows us to connect with our inner selves and find harmony in our lives. 
Another work is titled as Women in the 19th Century, published in the year 1845. Fuller in this work argued for women's rights and equality, challenging the traditional gender roles and advocating for women's access to education and the workforce. She also discussed the importance of women's intellectual and emotional fulfillment and criticized the limited societal expectations placed on women. So this work in this regard is considered as the first mature consideration of feminism by an American touching every aspect of the subject. It includes intellectual, economic, political and sexual aspect. These different different uh, aspects are covered in this work that is why it is considered as the first mature consideration of feminism. This was pub originally published in July 1843 in Dial magazine as the great lawsuit Men vs. Men, Women vs. Women. Full title of this work is Women in the 19th Century and Kindred Papers Relating to the Spare Condition and Duties of a Woman. From 1844 to 46. She was literary editor in Horace Greeley's famous newspaper titled as the New York Tribune. Another work is titled as Papers on Literature and Art, published in the year 1846. It is a sort of collection of various essays. In these essays, Fuller provided insightful literary analysis and criticism, discussing various works of art and literature and exploring their social and philosophical implications. These essays contain works such as at home and abroad life without and life within so these works are considered as important which are part of um, a work called paper on literature and art then next is a memoir of margaret fuller osoli published in the year 1852 written by w h jenning j clerk and ralph Waldo emerson Margaret Fuller possesses a unique personality due to which she has featured as powerful character in various works. That she is featured as Miranda in a work called Fable for Critiques, published in the year 1848. It is a sort of satirical poem by James Russell Lowell. Then she is featured as Zenobia in the Blithdale Romance, published in the year 1852 by Nathaniel Hawthorne. The title character in Elsie Venner by Oliver Wendell Holmes is based on Margaret Fuller. Then with this, this video lecture ends here. Hope this video lecture will help you in your UGC NET English Literature exams. Thank you.